This man is responsible for so many of my neck injuries because he's been giving me whiplash. This video is fueled by caffeine, despair and confusion. You guys probably know that this channel isn't very old, it's only about two years old and when I came into the commentary sphere I had no idea who John Swan was. What in all that is holy is a pie man? And it's only recently that I've actually managed to figure out these things. There are certain rabbit holes that I'm very reluctant to go down because I don't know how far they go down and how long it will take for me to wrap my mind around it. When I first came in, the only thing that I really knew about John Swan was that he was the copyright expert of sorts. The only communication I've ever had with John Swan is when I asked him for help with my Katie Morton copyright circa 2020. Oh, that's right, Morton. I haven't forgotten and I haven't forgiven. It's been a year. Anyway, from what I gathered, John Swan had a pretty good reputation. He was credible and he used resources that were relevant to what he was talking about. So when the words controversy and John Swan came together, I had no idea what people were talking about. And I want to talk about using reputation as a measurement for credibility. Let's go over a brief history of John Swan controversies. And if you're looking for a detailed and concise version of events, this isn't the video for you. One could say that I live under a rock having a life and that, but I've only really learned the intricacies of these events, like, yesterday. Number one, the dream situation. I don't know a dingly dangly thing about dream except he's a Minecraft YouTuber and was accused and proven to have cheated in Minecraft. How do you cheat in Minecraft? I haven't ventured into Minecraft, I'm still on Terraria. John set up a Discord account, or changed his existing Discord account to impersonate Dream and then began messaging Harley TBS, another creator, trolling them by sending racial slurs and inappropriate Minecraft mods as Dream. I just want to stop and add the fact that people create adult Minecraft modifications for the game truly speaks to the level that we've reached as a society. Technology is limitless and bountiful and can be great in improving us. And we do this. Problem being that Harley was at the time and still is a minor. You're not 18 yet, buddy. I find it ironic that John did this because he also called out another creator known as Pyman, who was 15 at the time. And Pyman was exposed for speaking inappropriately to a 12 year old. John, you sent adult Minecraft modifications to a minor and you're going to call out Pyman for sending some cringy flirty messages to another child. John railed on Pie Man, telling him that he needed to get help for his problem and saying that he had no place on the internet. And when Pie Man unsurprisingly released a statement stating that he wanted to yeet himself, John accused him of unaliving baiting. Both of these situations are perfectly and beautifully outlined by Willie Mac, and I will link his video in the description. My thoughts? Well, I believe the Pyman situation actually happened first. My comment basically is, no, the guy isn't an undesirable, he's a teenager. I will say I am quite critical of relationships that happen between young people when there's two, three, four or more years between them. This is because between the ages of zero to 25 are when human beings have the most amount of milestones within a short amount of time when speaking about development. And this is why I would generally advise that young people stay to other people in their own age group. While the ages of 15 to 18 doesn't sound very much, it's only three years, one person is looking to go off to college and can drive a car, whereas the other one is still about to sit their GCSEs. However, I differ from John Swan in this regard. I don't think it makes the older party an undesirable, and I don't think the nature of the relationship is inherently malicious. There's a reason why I have slight reservations about a 15 year old and an 18 year old, but not a 25 year old and a 28 year old. I definitely don't think the way to go is railing on a 15 year old and telling them that they're terrible and they need help and they should get off the internet. But let's go back to the dream situation. While I think it happened after the Pie Man situation, I do think it's relevant to parallel these two situations together. Now, John Swan outright lied. He said the autistic teenager was the one to blame. 
He lied to his friends, he lied to his viewers, and everybody was defending John. But as touched on before, no, it, it was John. John did it. And then there was another situation. I don't know too much about this situation, so I won't go into too much detail. But there was another allegation of inappropriate messages being exchanged between two younger people. The alleged victim in this situation was pressured by many different people into making a document or being part of a document listing all of the things that another creator, Kami, had done to them. And John Swan lapped this up, editing huge portions of the document. Did John immediately admit to being part of this document that would, in fact, falsely accuse somebody of doing something? No, he, he didn't admit to it. He lied about it again. What a shock. John continuously protested that he had nothing to do with the document and then he said he made a few edits to the document but then it was found out that he made a lot of edits to the document and it's a mess. It's a mess, friends. So now we have that out of the way. John Swan confirmed liar. Lies, 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 lies and when confronted with his lies, continues to lie. And I want to talk about reputation being a measurement for credibility. This is called the genetic fallacy, where an information is deemed valid or invalid based on the source and not the actual information. This phenomenon is actually incredibly valuable when it comes to very specific aspects in our lives. For example, we're more likely to believe that a certain product is good quality if it's promoted by one of our favourite creators. They are seen as a good person that we can relate to and therefore if they're going to advertise something to us, it must be good. It's why when it comes to controversy, there are always two sides to it because audiences will flock to support their particular favoured creator. And by the by, I am absolutely not blaming anybody for supporting John Swan. When I first heard of John Swan, I heard he was a reputable human being who had knowledge on certain things. He was trustworthy, a person that you could listen to and believe, and therefore I don't fault anybody for initially believing John Swan whatsoever. Maybe with this most recent situation, because John Swan had already proven to be a liar by that point. But even so, when somebody places themselves as a credible source who values integrity and journalism, you want to believe them. And the outcome of the genetic fallacy also becomes even more powerful when you combine it with parasocial relationships. Content creators are more than ever accessible to their viewers. You can message them, you can tweet at them, you can comment on their videos. You truly feel like you know these people. The modern day celebrity isn't somebody that you can get a far off picture of them from the paparazzi. It's somebody who has control of their own platforms and decides what they post and when they post it. It is insanely easy to create an image of a person who can be trusted and believed based off of both of these phenomena. And John Swan is a perfect example of this, going after Chris Hansen, for example, in his past content when talking about journalism and integrity, two things that he claimed that he stood by, but clearly doesn't. I've spoken about the genetic fallacy before, I spoke about it in my Eugenia Cooney retrospective video, and I've also spoken about parasocial relationships in that own dedicated video, and so I won't harp on it too much. But I did want to touch on this John Swan controversy because it illustrates what I said in both of those videos, and I think it's up to viewers definitely to reevaluate how they see people in the media. But it's also easier for viewers to be manipulated more than ever into trusting somebody who shouldn't be trusted to begin with. Again, I've already talked about these subjects before, but I haven't spoken on John Swan, and it's quite interesting because I've almost gotten whiplash from this guy. I first came on this platform thinking, oh, he's trustworthy and reputable, and then the whole dream situation happened and I got whiplash, and then John was suddenly all right again, and now this happens. Honestly, he truly should pay for my medical bills. I, I know that healthcare is free in the UK, but just out of principle. And in the words of the good old Benjamin Parker, with great power comes great responsibility. Not only is it up to viewers to be more vigilant, I think creators need to understand the power that they hold. And unfortunately, this is definitely going to have a ripple effect on actual trustworthy people. People who are genuine, content creators who can be trusted, are now going to be viewed with much more of a critical lens than beforehand. 
I think this is what the fallout of this situation will be for the commentary community and the whole of YouTube. John Swan has not only done a great disservice to himself and his career, but the community as a whole, and for all content creators. People aren't going to trust content creators anymore. In some regards, that may be better for the viewer, but when it comes to the content creator themselves, they're all going to be lumped in with people like John Swan. Assumptions are going to be made about them because of John Swan. And in an even wider context, when we're talking about commercialism and sponsorship, are people going to be inclined to believe a content creator when they're promoting a product or a brand? Are they going to be as inclined to support genuine content creators? Or when other controversy comes up, are people going to be less inclined to believe a content creator's side, even if it is the truth? Maybe that's hyperbole and everything will be absolutely fine, but when it comes to the interpersonal relationships of commentary community creators, I think they're going to be less trusting in their own friendships as well. I just wanted to talk about this and the wider problem when it comes to John Swan and believing creators based on reputation rather than evidence. I hope this was slightly informative and slightly interesting, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.